The polar vortex is going to become unstable as we go into late November and that will impact the weather locally across North America as we go into the entire month of December and it could bring a lot of cold air or it could not. It could bring a lot of snow or it could not. We're going to answer a lot of those questions later on in the video with the new data that has come out for the polar vortex. We're also going to look at your short term weather forecast across North America, especially the United States as we go through the week ahead. So thank you all for joining here on this Sunday evening. It is November 16th, 2025. If you enjoy my weather forecasts, you're already a subscriber, do me a favor, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Let's hit a thousand likes here on this video. I would appreciate it. Share it, hype it. I definitely appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we do cover Canada. We do cover the United States and the tropics during tropical weather season. So without further ado, let's talk about the forecast and we first take a trip up to the stratosphere. This is about 15, 20 miles above the Earth's surface. And this is important with talking about the polar vortex because suddenly if the stratosphere begins to warm, then think about it. As you go up naturally in the atmosphere, the atmosphere cools. But if you warm up the layer of the atmosphere that is 20 miles above the Earth's surface, all of that cold air is going to be trapped underneath the warm air, right? Because it's very buoyant. And that means it's going to be driving that cold air down into the troposphere where we live on Earth. And that could mean a cold December ahead. So as we go here into late November, especially this week, we're going to start to see warming in the stratosphere. It won't be really intense, but I do feel there's going to be enough warming to where Europe could actually start to feel the effects of the cold air here very shortly towards our Thanksgiving and getting in toward December 1st. Now, as we go into late November, we are going to see a rapid surge in warmth across the stratosphere. And that is what is called a sudden stratospheric warming event. And these are quite rare. Actually, they average around one to two times every three to four years. So they're not really that common, but you got to get an idea that the polar vortex is becoming very unstable. And so this could result in a very cold December for temperatures across the United States where warming is taking place near the Arctic Circle, we're going to be warming up. So whenever you see Alaska warmer than normal, you can bet that the colder air is going to be funneling southward and into the southern Canadian prairies and much of the United States. So we'll dive into that here more in just a moment, but let's look at the short-term weather forecast here this Sunday evening. We have a big storm system bringing some rainfall in across the west. This is has has been bringing rainfall into California much of the neighboring states out west as well, all the way to the continental divide of the Rockies as we go through this evening. And we're going to continue to see that moisture funneling in from the East Pacific Ocean over the next couple of days. And those rainfall totals are going to start to rise across the west. Now, once that system starts to move across the Four Corners region, it's going to be picking up and engulfing a lot of that moisture here from the Gulf Coast all the way up here into the Mississippi Valley and a Cyclone, a low pressure cyclone will likely develop across southern Kansas as we go into Thursday evening. A dry line cold front could potentially set up some severe weather from Oklahoma southward into the I-35 corridor of east central Texas. So big cities that we need to watch for severe weather will be Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Texarkana, Little Rock, Dallas, Fort Worth, and also Waco, and then potentially even the Houston Metroplex as we go into Thursday evening damaging winds, large hail, and a couple of tornadoes will be possible if this setup comes to fruition. Colder rains could be possible from eastern Colorado off the Front Range into Kansas and Missouri there, heading into the Illinois Valley in central Illinois. And then going to the day on Friday, we could potentially see this deepen. If this system does deepen, then we could have a severe weather threat south of the Ohio River all the way to the Gulf Coast, impacting areas from Kentucky to Tennessee into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and northwestern Georgia, going from Friday afternoon into Friday evening. Again, cold rain, maybe some snowflakes mixing in across Nebraska, Iowa, and northern Illinois as we go into next Friday. And then that system will zip across portions of the east, another low-pressure 
develop along the Gulf Coast, lifting up through the eastern seaboard. That could be more of a rain system. We also may have to watch for some severe weather in the southeast going into the following week. So looking at the rainfall totals, going to be likely a wet storm. These next couple of storms that come through across the central and east. So we could be seeing potentially several inches of rainfall. I know in the recent update, we did have a lot of rain in Texas, Oklahoma. It has lessened a little bit, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to see rainfall. I do feel we could have a couple of inches here, but there could be a corridor somewhere near or east of the Mississippi River that does see healthy rains that could produce some flooding here. Right now, the new update shows Kentucky, middle and western Tennessee, down here into northwestern Alabama, much of the state of Mississippi, and getting down into Louisiana, seeing that corridor of rainfall of 6 to 10 inches between now and the following Monday on Monday, November the 24th. So that could cause some flooding, especially if a lot of this does come down in a short amount of time. And then up here across the Midwest, we're going to see more soaking rains, colder rains out there, maybe some snowflakes mixing in where we could see an inch or two of rain, say from Chicago to Kansas City to Des Moines and Omaha, keeping close tabs on that as we go through the next seven days. As far as snowfall is concerned, a lot of the colder air is going to be into the higher elevations of the West. So the Rockies, the C Cascades in the Pacific Northwest, and the Sierras in California, we could potentially be seeing areas of a couple of feet of snow in those higher elevations. Yes, some wet snowflakes could mix in here across the Midwest. We could see some minor accumulations of snowfall, mainly on grassy surfaces. Would not be shocked to see some slushy accumulations on roadways. If this does occur more at nighttime, but I do feel that the warm pavement temperatures will overcome and I think it will start to melt a lot of the snow that does try to stick through the next seven days. And a lot of that has to be because of the warm air, right? It's been really warm here this weekend. We're going to continue to see the warm air as we go through the next seven days. In fact, record-breaking heat still ticketed for areas from Texas to the Carolinas. I really do feel that we're going to have a warm week ahead, a little bit cooler up here in the northeast, a little bit cooler down here into the southwest where those troughs are situated but in between, man, it's going to be warm out there over the next seven days, at least for November standards. So here we go again tomorrow, Monday, November 17th, record highs. And folks, these aren't just records that are broken in five years ago. This, These are records that are longstanding, 50, 75, even some case 100-year records here across Texas and into portions there of Louisiana. And that will continue into Tuesday, into Wednesday, and then even into Thursday, believe it or not, and maybe even a few records broken on Friday. So all week long across the south, it's going to be warm, maybe a little bit more wintry to the north where we have areas into say the Dakotas or Minnesota, Wisconsin, or even over the northeast that may stay into the 40s, more typical for this time of year further to the north. Now, again, let's take you back to the stratosphere because it's going to come in a couple of phases here. I think we have some warming of the stratosphere as we go into this upcoming week and then potentially a more significant sudden stratospheric warming event, which we already touched on. It doesn't happen very often, one to two times every three to four years. And I do feel like this could be the year where we have a big, unstable polar vortex that could send cold air all across the globe. And I think some of that cold air will be expected across North America here in short order. Why? I do feel that is because the teleconnections do tell the story, at least part of the story, the EPO, the East Pacific Oscillation that is positive right now. That's why we're seeing the warmer air. Look how far negative it goes as we go into late November. We're down to minus five almost here at some of the criteria. So that is pretty impressive. Just signifying that we're at three above right now. We're at positive three. We could be at negative five as we go here into late November. Let's look at the AO. This is the Arctic Oscillation also positive right now near 1.5 to 2. It's going to be going down to minus 2, perhaps minus 3 as we go into late November. And that also is a sign that some colder air and not only just cold air, but Arctic air will be moving southward in short order. So let's look here at the ensemble guidance. The European ensemble mean is showing a trough across the west and that ridge along the eastern seaboard. We have a ridge of high pressure up here into the Arctic Circle and Alaska. Whenever you see a ridge 
ridge of high pressure in Alaska, that means the colder air is going to be going somewhere and it's going to be dropping south. So I think it's going to start out west and then shift further to the east. We look at the another ensemble. This is the GFS ensemble mean, and it is very similar here, if not identical to the European ensemble mean that we just showed you. So there's a lot of consistency here in the long range guidance that the colder air will be coming. I think it starts out West as we go into Thanksgiving weekend across Western Canada, and then it drops into the Western third of the United States. We'll feel it first. And then as we go deeper here into the month of uh, December, it's going to get progressively colder. So the first week of December, we start to see the colder air coming in from Canada. Remember, Canada, Western Canada, British Columbia has seen a lot of snowfall and a lot of snowpack. Alaska's seen it, Yukon, the Northwest Territories, Alberta, you name it. We've seen a lot of snowpack up in Canada and into Alaska and that colder air moving over that snowpack is just going to enhance a lot of that cold air for the lower 48 as we go into December. So here's the first week. There's the second week. We may have a little bit of a warming trend moderating briefly and then here comes that second very intense push of colder air and this could be in time for the second half of December. I know we're looking far out ahead of time but just when you look at the polar vortex it takes about two to four weeks of a lag time to get that cold air down from the stratosphere to where we live in the troposphere. And this could bode well for snow lovers in the east as we get towards Christmas and perhaps even New Year's. And that means we could have a little bit of warmer weather out west by that time. But man, could this be a great setup for the east for cold and snow lovers? That is for sure. And we look at the storm track as well. So yes, we have the colder air, but you have to have the moisture obviously too to see the snowfall. Here we go across the Pacific Northwest has been wet as of recent. I think we're going to trend wetter out east. It's going to take some time. It's not going to be an overnight setup, but I do feel as we go deeper into the month, week by week through December, we're going to start to trend more active in the east with that negative EPO and that negative AO we showed you the Eastern Pacific Oscillation and the Arctic Oscillation working in tandem to bring that colder air further south. We have the moisture from the East Pacific and the Gulf, and I think that really comes together well for those cold and snow lovers out east for potentially a winter storm track that could actually be pretty far, for, uh, far south. We actually could potentially be seeing snow in southern states. This not, will not likely be just limited to the northern states. I do feel that with the colder air, we have drier air, so Arctic air is is dry air. I think that could push the storm track further south once we get into late December and for the holidays. So areas of Texas, Louisiana even, into Mississippi, Tennessee, the Carolinas, uh, Georgia, Alabama, all you southern states down here, um, maybe minus Florida, but uh, most of the southern states should be ready for potentially some snowfall and wintry activity as we go into the new month of December. So that is the new update for today. I hope you found uh, this video and Informative. Just a brief update for you here this evening. We'll have another weather forecast out for you tomorrow. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already. If you have subscribed, well, keep staying subscribed, obviously, but also like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it, hype it. Definitely appreciate that. Thanks for your support, everybody, and have a wonderful, safe rest of your weekend out there.